All right, folks. Welcome to part five of the Lender tutorial. So where we last left off, we had finished Mia's dream and we uh, um, exited the dream sequence, which is where I split the Mia's dream split. So when we get control back here, we're going to run out of the house, out through the front door, where we have to talk to Septimus to end the uh, end sequence. So we're going to jump to the left and talk to Septimus. So this ends the dream sequence. Where it's going to teleport us back to our bed, where we get our health back and our MP back. Next, we're going to go downstairs to a cutscene with Jess. So again, we're going to dash through the screen, but in the next screen, do not dash. Alright. So for the next part, we're just going to be leaving town. Nothing else we need to do here. So we're going to leave town through the south exit. I usually go this way. Around like this. So we're going to head to the cabin. Um, kind of the same way we went to the coastal cave. So down this way. South over here. And into the cabin. There's a cutscene with Mia. And into the cabin. And we're going to dash straight up once we're inside and talk to Nava. I want to say yes to his question. It doesn't matter if you say yes or no, but both are about the same speed, so. Mash X on the US version. On Japanese, just mash um, square. And here's where we get the Spring Beam. This is going to be a very important item for the speedrun. Um, we need it anyways, but this uh, this item is going to be used for stuff other than it's intended for. So there's the Spring Beam. And then next, we are going to go get the Legendary Sword. So we already previously in the run died 20 times and did the Quick Restart 20 times. And that set a flag in the game's memory to allow the legendary sword to be um, acquired by the player. So we're going to go get it. Um, the legendary sword is right around where we got the uh, magic upgrade earlier in the game. So um, it's up here, a screen north of this way. We go up this way to the left. Oh, don't get hit by that. Up this way. <laughs> um, do a jump grab on that to get rid of that quickly. And then go up here and talk to the statue. So um, if you did not do 20 resets, if you did like 19 or 18, then this guy will say, guy will say oh man, you, you don't deserve this thing yet. Are you too good for this thing? So if that happens, then you need to go back to town, uh, save the game, and kill yourself 20 times, <laughs> or kill yourself a few more times, um, in the second floor of, uh, of Jess's house. Um, same deal. Bomb yourself down to five or below health, save the game, and then bomb yourself uh, a couple times. So, um, that gave us the, uh, legendary swords. So from here, instead of what we're intended to do, to do which is to go to the underground waterway, Instead, we're going to go do a sequence break. So, you might remember this before. It's um, where we do that uh, that crazy three-frame jump. We're going to go do that again. So we're going to head up this way. Not bonk into trees. Right up here. Up this way. I want to clip our flail, as we need to break that. Down this way. Down this way, this way, this way. Um, for this, I equip the spring beam, because we're going to need that anyways. Just to make that jump. 
and then up and over into this section again. So in case you forgot the setup for this, you want to go down over to this, um, bonk off of this, and then short uh, shoulder slide there, and then do the three frame um, jump over here. With practice, you should get that within the first few tries. But remember, it's a three frame jump. It's not supposed to be easy. Like there, there got it, third try. So once you're over here, we're going to skip the first bit of this dungeon. So we skip the underground waterway entirely. It's the, the thing that's down here. Um, we also skip the first bit of this and we skip um, breaking these stone heads. So once you're up here, you want to go into this door and this, um, this skips us to the second half of the uh, Nerud Lair dungeon. So if you want to have a split here, this would be a good place to do it. Like a, a bomb jump split or something. So for this, we're going to start off by pushing this statue to the left. Um, here I get out the hot dog to make this jump easier. Jumping from there to there. We're going to go up here. And we're going to hit this switch. Okay, so from here, what we're going to do is we're going to jump from here onto this right here. So, that's how you do that jump. It's down left, right, and up. So we're, we're making like a U-shape to make it onto here. Okay. So we're going to jump over here, over to here, past these, and then um, what you're intended to do here is to go up this ladder and go over and push this middle pillar down to make it over to um, where the statue is. What instead we're going to do is go up this ladder onto this. We're going to do the same setup as the, um, the bomb jump skip before. So we're now on this pixel right here. We're going to get out our hot dog and then we're going to make this jump like that. So this jump also takes a bit of practice because the there is just about as much leeway to make this jump. But this skips having to um, go up to the other um, load zone and pushing that uh, that pillar. So practice this a bit because this saves a decent amount of time. Once you get over here, you don't need to get rid of your hot dog. You can just run into this to push this out of the way and then go up into this room. This you want to push the right statue to the right. Push this one also to the right and then stand on here. Then we're going to dash on down here. Um, for this, there's specific timing for this. So we're going to do this. Hit that. Hit this. Hit it again. Hit that. Hit this. Go over here. Don't exit yet. Now you can exit. After you hear the, the click sound, then you can exit. If you uh, exit that too early, then sometimes that doesn't, uh, that doesn't work. So go over this way, and then up here again. Down and around this way, up into here. We're going to do the ones on the right side of the room first. Um, don't worry about your health too much here. So when you get to about this room, if your health is a little low, say like halfway, what you want to do here is use your water scroll to heal. Um, you also want to switch to your legendary sword at this point, because we're going to be doing some combat. Um, in this room, when you enter this room, We'll, we'll just show what happens here. When you enter this room, you're attacked immediately by two um, two dwarves here. And then there's this third one. And then down here, there's two more. So the way that you do this room is you enter it and then hold left to get these guys to attack you. Get those two. And then get this one just like that. This one and those two, you can just get like that. And then once you kill those, that, um, that causes this to go down. So this room, practice a little bit. Um, it's very easy to get killed by these guys. Um, if you're not careful, they do a ton of damage. If you need some more health, you can break those to uh, see if they give you a drop. Uh, before you leave this room, you want to equip your Hunter's Bow. And then go through this door. This causes this cutscene to happen. So the way that this head works is that it will 
shoot three things at you, and then it'll pause for a couple seconds. So during that pause, you can hit it at least three times, and then just dodge side to side. So just like that, to make this super easy. Um, if you wanted to play this risky, you can stay up here and keep doing damage to it in between these phases. So just like that. Um, the way that these heads work is you damage them three time or five times. You gotta pause for a second as it does an exploding animation, then hit it five more times. Pause for the exploding animation, then hit it five more times. And those that'll break these um, these stone heads. So again, practice and you'll get it. Now we're gonna head over to the left side of this area. If you want to, you can hit that to save a damage boost. Um, in the chest over here to the right is an herb if you're low on herbs, so that's another safety herb you can get. Alright, over here, you need to be a little bit careful in the patterns for these. Um, these take out a ton of health, as you can see. <laughs> it's a lot of health if you get hit by those, so you want to avoid getting hit by those. So here I wait in the middle of this thing, and then go down there. Um, you can see there's not too much leeway here. So, let's say like right here, in between these these posts is where you want to wait for that, and then go down here. Um, for this, you want to be on the same plane as this one here, and then jump over it, go down. Here, you just hold left, um, halfway up like where this post is, and it'll automatically um, move you over to the right position to, um, to push this thing out of the way. Then we go down into this room, where there's a little cutscene. Run on down to hit this to open it, keep going down for another cutscene. And then you want to start from the right. Once you start pushing it, you can hold up again, because it's autopilots. So push down, hold up. Push down, hold up. Push down, hold up. So now for this, you just want to hang out right about here, because there's a cutscene that happens. All right, now we make our way out again. So this, you just want to wait for those to get out of the way. Same deal for this. You want to wait for these to get out of the way. And then go right on through there. Here we're going to head back out into the um, middle main room. So if you had used your... Um, your health restore at this point, um, your magic, you're going to want to go in here and get your magic and your health back because this uh, this part, especially in early runs, can be very tricky in a room coming up, so it's not too big of a deal, a deal to go get your health and HP back there. Then either way, you're going to run out next for a little cutscene that automatically plays. Um, leave your bow and arrow equipped as well, because we're going to need that in the next section. Um, the quick way to do this room, the way that I do it, is you let this play. Run up, right, and then up between those fireballs, and then right into the door. Push this one to the right. Up through here. And then we want to drop down into the hole. So this next room can be tricky um, and also dangerous. So there's seven stone heads here. The order that you need to kill these is a specific order. So um, the first one that we kill is the middle one on the right side. So we do it like this with the bow and arrow. So then after that, we move over to this side, where we're going to get this one from right about here. And then here we stand next to this one and kill this one. So this is a very uh, completely safe spot here. Oh, it's not dead yet. Okay, then next is this one. So for this one, the fireball on the right can still go after you, so you just need to move between these two spots. 
and be safe from it. Then you move up here and get this one like this. And then get this one like this. And then the last one that you need to be careful of we're going to hit like this. So this is also a safe spot. You won't be hit by the beam if you hit it from here. If you aren't quite in the right position, then just inch over to the, uh, to the right until you get it. Okay. Here you want to switch to the sword. Um, if you need health, just break some of the, um, the plants that are down here while you're waiting for this to, uh, to come down. And then get on that. So the, uh, the seven stone headroom takes a little bit of, uh, a little bit of practice before you get, uh, used to the order in which to hit those, but it's not too bad. Same deal here, where you want to get the fireballs to, uh, to turn, and then you can just safely exit the room. Here you're gonna go up here, use this door. Um, this room is on a timer, but it's super easy. We're gonna start by dashing up, left, up the stairs. You wanna hang out right about here, and then jump on this, dash up here, hit the switch, and then go down in here. Um, if you need a heal, there is a hidden chest right here, which is hidden behind this, and it has a blue potion. So um, if you need to get your health back, you can use the blue potion here. Oh, <laughs> it ate my input, of course. So you can use that, and then get that back. Uh, not really needed though. So here you'd switch to the bomb either way. Uh, for this you need to inch between these, push the left one to the left, uh, go up here, push this one also to the left to hit the switch, and then into the next room. Go up here. Um, for this you want to pull out a bomb right here, throw it over there, and then go into this cutscene. This causes the elf on the left to die immediately. And then for this, you want to kill those two, just like that. And that causes the statue to appear. You talk to the statue to get your health back. Go over here to get a health upgrade. Which we'll fast forward through. Okay. Now down here, um, be careful with this jump. If you miss this jump, like, oh no, I missed it. You have to... Um, go and exit the room and do this again because you can't uh, <laughs> you can't um, go back up there again so if that happens you need to do the room again because this uh, this platform's gone so make sure not to miss that jump I have missed it before so that's what you have to do if you miss the jump you need to do the room again and here's where we split or where I split right there where he stops walking so this is the Nerud boss um, this is the easiest boss in the game because it's pretty much an auto scroller. What you do here is you um, dash up to go up to where the boss is. Right here. You go through his text. And then once the fight starts here, we're going to dash downwards. And then once the rocks start falling, you need to just start doing jump slashes while going downwards. And then once you're at the bottom of the screen, all you have to do is just hold down. Um, the boss is very, very slowly off screen up here, and he's going downwards towards us. Once he gets back here, the fight ends. So um, once you're down at the bottom of the screen, you have nothing to worry about. Um, there is some time variability in this fight. Sometimes this boss takes an extra like five to 10 seconds just to get down here. Um, there's nothing you can do about that, so don't worry about that. And then once the screen turns black is when I split. For this very difficult boss fight. There. That's where I split the very difficult new rude boss fight. So here we got a bunch of uh, story stuff that happens, so we'll fast forward through this.
That uh, that fight is the same in both U.S. and Japanese versions as well. I should point out. All right. So the um, the next part here is a long story sequence before we even get to the Aline's Dream um, dungeon. So if you're worried about, oh man, this has been really long so far without a bathroom break, there's pretty much a two um, uh, a two minute bathroom break coming up here. So you'll have two minutes to do whatever you need to do without uh, controller inputs once we get back to town and do some uh, some other plot stuff. So um, this is roughly three ish hours, three like three to three fifteen hours into uh, into the speed run. Roughly the halfway point, a bit past the halfway point, um, where you have a, a nice little break to do what you need to do. So here's a bit more talking. You're gonna the last guy when the last guy talks to you to give you fifty gilder, that's uh that's your cue. That um you get control again. So if you need a uh, another healing potion. There is one right here. This is a green healing potion. So if for whatever reason you used one before, um, you can get one back right there. So then from there we go straight down and back into the desert. So now we're going to be heading um, back to town. So we're going to head down this way. Go through these guys. Drop down off of this cliff. Drop down through here. Get this chest. This chest has a life upgrade. Okay. And now we're going to continue west back to town. All right, so when we're going to town, um, what I like to do here is go to town in the um, northeast exit of town here, or entrance of town in this case, because we're going to be entering the house just down here. And this is kind of an easy way to get there. So we're going to talk to the guy on the left side of the table here. There is a yes-no question in kind of the middle of his uh, his dialogue here. So in the Japanese version, just keep mashing uh, square. In the US version, get ready to hit uh, hit X there. Um, don't talk to him twice, this is what I just did. And then leave the house. There's a cutscene here with Mia. We'll fast forward through this. Once she leaves, we get control again, and we need to go up to the sanctuary and enter the sanctuary. So that's where we'll be heading next. Right up in there, where we get another cutscene, which we will fast forward through just to expedite things. Alright, so after the screen fades out here, there's another little cutscene between Mia and Alundra. And then after this, we're going to go back to Jess's house and talk to Jess. This is one of the few times where we actually actively talk to Jess in the, uh, in the run. The only time, actually, <laughs> as you will see. Over here, into Jess's house, we're going to go and talk to Jess. We should get some rest, you know? Alright, so we're going to take his advice and go rest. So we're going to go upstairs. 
and dash into bed with the swag. Oh, not bonk first, though. Okay. So this is a cutscene here. And the bathroom break is coming up right after this. So we're going to let this play out. There's a little cutscene between Alundra and Mia. Right here. And then we got some more text to skip right here. So when the screen fades out is when your input break starts. So right here is where you can put down your controller for two minutes because this is all automated. There's no text to skip. So right when that screen fades to black is when you can safely put down the controller for a couple minutes. So take a note in your notes or whatever, mental note, what have you, this is where your um, your big bathroom break is halfway through the uh, the Alundra speed run. So I'm going to fast forward this. This is just the um, the Jess pouring out for Jess scene. So as this plays out, so we got this cutscene. There's some dialogue at the end of this with uh, Ronan and Alundra. Um. And then after that is another kind of auto-scroller, though you still have to advance text in the next bit. So fast-forwarding, fast-forwarding. It'd be great if this could fast-forward faster, but BizHawk is not very good at fast-forwarding. All right, when it fades out and fades back again, that's when your cue to start um, text mashing again. For this, this goes at a set speed, so you want to mash here rather than do your, your measured text skipping. All right. And then in the next scene, we do our measured text skipping right here with Septimus. But he gives us a key. So once we got the key, we're going to go and open that blue chest where there's going to be another set of long cutscenes. So Septimus leaves, and then we get control again. But all we do is go and open that blue chest. Right there. Alright, so for this, this text advances at um, a set speed. Holding down square won't speed it up, so all you need to do in this part is tap square until the um, the screen fades out and we get to um, the proper Jess cutscene. So I'm going to fast forward this while mashing square. Alright, so we get the armor, and then the cutscenes continue here. So now we're back to the, the measured text skipping of holding down square to make uh, text go faster. So again, I'm just fast forwarding through this, but in a run, this would be normal speed. So I think there's like five or so um, desk cutscenes here. If you're barely paying attention to the game during this, just know that these continue until... Um, uh, you see Alundra in bed, um, waking up in bed after all the cutscenes. That is when we get proper control back. And when we get proper control back, if you're playing on console with fastest speed, is another spot where if you wanted to safety save to avoid a soft lock or to account for a soft lock, that would be the time. Because the second potential soft lock in the game can happen um, <clears throat> right before the next dungeon. And I believe that happens on both Japanese and US and, uh, and PAL versions of the game. Alright, so right here, when you see the UI back is when we get control back. 
So right here is where we would safety save if you wanted to avoid the soft lock on console. So right here is where you'd save. So here we're going to leave and exit the house. Since Jess is not here anymore, pour one out for him. Um, we can always dash out of here. Where we get a cutscene with this guy. So now we're going to Eileen's house. Um, Eileen's house is just south of Sybil's house. We're going to head down in this way. Over this way to the right. Over to Eileen's house. So this is where the soft lock can happen. So I talked to her first. And then talk to these two guys. So after you talk to the third person, she moves out of the way. Um, the soft lock would happen in that she'd move, and then I wouldn't be able to move again after she did. Um, but I'm pretty sure that only happens on console with fastest speed on. After you do that, go up here. The stairs up are on the upper left side. Go down over this way, and then talk to everybody, starting from Mia. So Mia, Septimus, Gustav, and then Mayor Guy. And then talk to Aline. And this causes the sequence to start with uh, with doing this. So you say yes to Mia. And then talk to Aline again to start the dream. And this actually starts the Aline's Dream Dungeon. So this dungeon is the second longest in the game. Uh, it's also really complicated. Um, the first bit here is kind of the, the prologue to Aline's Dream. Where we see cutscenes of Alundra and Mia starting the dungeon. Okay, so from here, we're going to start off by jumping up these and falling down onto this switch. Then we're going to go back on up, climb these stairs. And then we're going to fall down here. After we see this, we're going to dash straight up into the teleporter to the screen. So for this, I'm going to head up and left, and then up onto there after hitting the button. So then next, we're going to head over to where Mia is. So we're going to keep climbing these stairs up to our left, and we're going to fall down right by this arrow, dash up and to the left into this teleporter. So this, uh, this room autopilots here. So you want to skip this, and then the game does its own thing here to hit that switch. And then after this is done, we're going to go and hit that teleporter. Right there. We're going to continue climbing these stairs up, hug the bottom side, go up to the top again to avoid those spikes. And then this part is an automated jumping section. There's multiple ways to do this. Um, the fastest, and, or not the fastest, but the safest way to do this is to just do it as intended. There's an alternate way to do this, which involves jumping over to the um, top set of stuff there to get underneath Mia as she's jumping to slightly speed it up. But when you're first learning the game, just do it as intended. The other way is riskier and only saves a few seconds. So just do this. If you want to see the other strat, look it up on the Discord. Um, and then after you do that, you jump down here. Um, you can slash two of these to get those out of the way. Um, go into this teleporter. Dash over to the left, up. Um, this chest has a herb in it. So I grab that. Go over to the second waterfall from the herb chest. Jump up in it. Then we're going to jump up and around over to this. Jump up and around and down again. Um, oop, went too far here. Up and down. There we go. Okay, we're back again. <laughs> and then down into the teleporter here. Um, for this, it's very important that you not mess up the jump here. So you need to jump on Mia's head here and then go across the other side. Um, so if for whatever reason you, you go, oh no, I beefed it. Um, you have to go all the way back in here again 
back to the start. Um, go all the way back up here and do all that all over again. So don't miss the jump. Just get on Mia's head there. Jump on here. Grab that. Throw this up there. Go and get the chest. Jump down here. Make sure not to accidentally hit the teleporter. So you want to jump past there. Um, if you accidentally jump on the teleporter, then you can still get back over there. And I believe you can uh, you can jump past that to make it over there, but just don't miss that. Yep. All right. So then we jump onto there, and now we're in the crystal room. So um, this crystal here, you can slash it with your sword, and the one that you break will break the corresponding crystal that's on the teleporters here. Um, the route that I take through the dungeon starts off with the brown pyramid. So I break that one to go into the bottom left one. Um, if your health is kind of low here from getting hit by the tentacle monsters, you can go into the save point here and go get your health back. Um, alternatively, you're, you're sub you should have two casts of magic by this point. So what you can do to get your health back is to just cast the, um, the uh, water magic. But in any case, to start off, I go from over here. I dash left and then up into this teleporter. And then we're going to go up and to the right over to this one. Um, equip your sand cape. And use it right here. And then go into this teleporter. We're going to hit the switch that's here, right there. Wait for a second to let that activate. And then use the sand cape again. Go down to the bottom of the screen into this teleporter. And then we're going to dash down into this one where there's this little jumping section here. So you go over to this, jump up to this, over to this, and then over to this. So we get the key, and then get right back in that teleporter. And we're going to dash up into this teleporter. And for this one, we're going to take the upper left teleporter instead. So up over to this, go under the sand, go up into here, and then up into this teleporter. And here you want to jump down, hit that, and then go into the bottom left of the screen. And this is where um, we get control of Mia. So here we want to take her, jump onto a lunder there, and then hit that, go straight right, hit that, and then straight down to get her to talk again. Jump on this, dash up, right and up, into the screen. So for this screen, what you want to do is you want to take your wind scroll out, have that equipped, go up right here, and then cast the under wind scroll. That will open up both of the um, the pillars there. Um, the next room can be dangerous, so if you don't have full health by this point or close to it, I would recommend using an herb if you got one. Um, you can also use the water scroll to get yourself back to full health by this point. So here we open that with the key that we got. And then we're into the first boss fight. This is the um, the trickiest one in the dungeon because there's two enemies that you have to fight. So these are the, um, I forget what they're called, but here's an example of how much damage these things do to you if they touch you. So that is most of your health from full health. And now we're down to three from getting hit twice. So three hits from full health will kill you. So you need to be really careful against this boss fight. So from here, you want to do jumping slashes to hit the eye, jumping slashes to hit the eye. Um, I go up and I make sure to take these on one at a time, just to be extra safe. Um, you can afford to be hit once in this fight. Um, if you're not confident with jump slashes, you can just do regular um, slashes on the ground against it, but the fastest way to do this is jump slashes, so.
It's just like that. That's how you want to take out the bosses. So just something you need to practice. This can be super dangerous. Okay, so after the boss is dead, this crystal will activate and it'll start doing the rotating crystal thing again. Um, the one that I do next is the yellow... Um, yellow thing that has a piece missing. Right there, that one. So you want to slash that. Make sure not to hit the wrong one. And then we're going to leave the way we came, essentially. We need to get back to that, uh, that main room. Watch out for these. Because these, these worms can be jerks. Uh, we need to have our sand cape equipped again at some point, so I just equip it now. Uh, go along the left side to get back out of here and hit the teleport without missing the jump. That's important. The so sand cape. We're going to take the bottom teleporter again. You could fall through the middle center of the screen here, but I find it's more consistent to just do this. And then take the bottom right teleporter back to the main screen. So if your health is not looking good right now, you could either use the um, the water scroll right now, or you can go into the teleport point and get your healthier magic pack. It's up to you. Um, we're going to do a fair bit of damage boosting in the next section here, which is this one. Um, so I would recommend having some health for the next bite, the next bit. So for this, we're going to hold up, and we're going to damage boost north. Like this. We're going to hit the bottom one, the top one. Uh, and then the top one again to open that. And then go in the teleporter here. Hit the switch, which is down. Just like that. We're going to go down and left to get on this, and then go up through this door. There's another bit where we're going to damage boost up to here. We're going to go into the left teleporter here. Um, you can do this part without freeing Mia from there, but you'll get a text box again. So, um, for this bit, just get rid of both of those to get her out of the way. Alright, then up into this teleporter. For this one, I switch back to the sword because there are dudes on the bridge here. So when I get to the bottom of the bridge, you don't necessarily you don't have to kill these guys, but just to show you here, um, what I usually do is I dash down and then shoulder charge right about here, and that gets rid of two of them. Um, here is where we're going to be going here. So in the next screen, when we drop down here, here's what happens if you just regularly fall down. You fall down short of where this chest is. What we want to do is fall onto this chest. So what we do here is we go here and then just jump down and let go. And that will um, drop you down onto there. So from here, just do a standing forward and then let go of controls and that will put you on top of there. So grab this chest from the side. Um, this chest over here has an herb if you need one. There's, I believe, three herbs in this, uh, this dungeon that are easy to get. But either way, get the, chi, the key and or the herb. Um, in here, go back in the left teleporter, back to the screen. Um, over here, we're going to break the left one. You only have to break the, the top one, because you can just jump over this. And then, uh, if you wanted to, I believe there's an herb up here that you can get. Yeah. So there's another safety herb if you need it. Um, then go into this teleporter here. This room is on a timer. Um, what you have to do for these is you need to put a rock onto the geysers that are slightly bigger than it is. Like you can see the difference here. Here's a big one, here's a small one. So we put one on... I don't think that would work, so... Like that. Um, this one, if you're running down, you do a jump throw from about there. So like right here is where you jump throw, and that'll get that one. This one, you jump throw from there. And then this one, I just play it safe and do a regular standing throw from there. And that opens the boss room. Here you want to equip your sword before you go in there um, for another boss fight. This one, there is only one boss to fight instead of two. So this one is a lot, uh, a lot safer to do. So for this one, I run up to um, that right there. And then just bring that one down south towards you. And that one's no problem. 
Okay, so that was the fire area. The next one is the purple crystal. Purple. Um, I forget the shape of this one, but it's purple. I guess if you're colorblind, you might want to memorize the shape. But it is that one. Purple diamond is the next one. So we're going to head on out of the fire area, so we need to equip the flail once more. For this one, you want to hug the right side of the wall on your way out, because the geysers will turn back on if you're not quick. So take out the top one, go back through this, and we're going to damage boost south on our way out of here. This is another bit if you need to get your health back to... Um, Uh, actually, don't bother getting your health back at this point, because in the next section, which is the bottom right, up over here, in this chest, is a health restore. So um, you can either get this uh, this health upgrade immediately, if your health is like at half or whatever, or at the end of this part of the dungeon, you can go and get it then on our way out. So either way, it's up to you. Um, don't fall in there, that's dumb. Don't do that. So let's go and get that, uh... We'll get that health grade on health upgrade on the way out. How about that? So here there is a... Tentacle monster in the way. So what we want to do here is... We want to go over here and fall into this one. Right here in the middle of the... Middle of the screen there. And then for this, this is how I do it. I push this pillar over to the left. Run over this one. Push this pillar down, push this pillar to the right, and then jump over across, hit this button, jump across here, push this one up, push this one to the right to hit that button. We're going to jump up across this gap to hit that button, and then we're going to backtrack the way we came, without falling. <laughs> um, this one we can just break with our flail, and then hit this button. Yep. And then from here, uh, so what that accomplished was that opened up um, this door right here. Um, so what we're going to do here is go on to this teleporter. Okay. Where we need to trigger the button here with Mia. So we're going to jump up here and then jump on her head. And that triggers the button. And then go back into the teleporter here. Go on to these teleporters, teleport you um, throughout this screen. So just jump on this eye. It can be kind of tricky to actually get on it correctly, but that's how you do it. And then go on to this teleporter. If you ever accidentally fall in the wrong hole here, um, that's the. Uh, this is where it will it will bring you after you backtrack. But here we hop into here again. And then we're going to go down here. Before we can go inside this door, we need a key. So we're going to go in here next. So this next screen can be tricky. Um, I equip my sword here. Because this part can uh, can be kind of trolly. But here we're going to go up to the top of the screen. Up over here. To get that key. Up over here is an herb if you need one. I already have nine herbs, so we don't need that. Again, you can, um, you can shoulder dash through these guys. It'll kill them in one shot because we have the, um, the legendary sword equipped. So now that we got the key, we can go through this door over to where the boss is. So here's the boss. Same deal, there's only one of them. So rush him down, get him there, hop down a few character lengths. Oh. And then hit it three times. So it's three hits in uh, both versions of the game. Japanese and US. That's just how much damage the legendary sword does. It does a lot. And then uh, there's only one form that the crystal is going to be in here. This will be the blue variation of the crystal. So just go ahead and slash here. And we're going to make our way out. So as we do this, we need to switch back to the flail, because we'll need that. 
Uh, get on the eye teleporter here. And then get on this. So I mentioned that uh, we can get that health upgrade later. Um, since we didn't get it earlier because I loaded the save state, um, now is when we'll get it. So we'll get it right here. Again, you can get this at the start of this section of the dungeon, or you can get it at the very end. I recommend that you get it and not skip it, especially in the US version, which is what this version is. You're going to need all the health you can get. And then to leave, we go into this teleporter. So now the last one is the upper left teleporter. Um, don't worry about your health or your MP at this point, because we're past the, um, the difficult sections. So just go right into this teleporter. And we're into the more annoying jumping sections in the game. So for this, we have to make our way over to these buttons. And you can see right there, I already fell in. So to make this easier, um, what we're going to do is equip the spring beam here. And we're going to get this out before we start this jumping section. So this, um, this gives us a little bit of leeway in our jumps. And makes this easier. So this just requires practice. This part is super frustrating. So again, don't worry about it if um, you're not getting this immediately first try every time. Because it is, it's kind of rough. So um, once you hit this switch here, that causes the spike balls to not spawn anymore. And we can continue on. So you want to go up here to the upper left teleporter and go into it. And then here you want to hold up while um, while swimming and then go into there. If you just hold, uh, fell in here and held right, sometimes you get caught against the uh, the bottom of, um, of this thing. So make sure to do that. And then before we go into this teleporter, I equip the sword because we're going to need it for a part coming up. But here we hit the button right there, then go into the teleporter. And then we're going to backtrack. So back into this teleporter. And then here we're going to go to the bottom right of the screen. So straight down this way. So this next bit can be dangerous. So prepare yourself for this. Make sure you have the sword equipped. And for even more safety, I might suggest having the herbs equipped here. So go into this teleporter. There's going to be two dudes here that will attack you immediately. Right like that. So I suggest just killing them. Then we're going to start making this climb up here. Oh, didn't quite get in there. Alright, so these two... You want to kill... ASAP to get those out of the way. <laughs> you can see I just took a ton of damage there. Um, so if you need to use an herb, there's an herb right here in the chest. So you can get it back immediately. And then the chest on the right is the required one. This is the key that we will use to... Um, finish the rest of the dungeon. So you go back down here to this teleporter. Um, at this point, you do not need to heal anymore. So if you're at like one health right here, don't worry about it. You won't be losing any more health from here on out. So we're going to go from here up to the upper left. Back into this teleporter. Where Mia will appear. And we'll actually do this puzzle. So for this, you just need to hit the switches at around the same time that she does. It's really not that hard, so just jump on there, jump on there, jump on there, jump on there. This one you can hit a little bit early. And then go up and through the door. And this is the end of the dungeon. So there's a cutscene here of um, Eileen. And the way that I split for this is that when the um, the screen turns completely white and the sound effect is done, that's when I split. Right there is when I split for uh, Alien Stream. So this is the uh, this is the end of that. This is the end of tutorial five. Um, for tutorial six, we will go over the next bit of the game. So, stay tuned for that one.